Hey guys, this is Adam from Encounter Wargaming, and today I'm going to show you how to take this cardboard cutout terrain from the Red Veil Infinity Starter set that just came out and turn it into something like this. A little bit more detailed, in depth, a little bit more durable, so that you can have this train for a while and really be proud of it. <laughs> Here's a little bit of a closer look as to exactly what I did uh, with this. So first off, some of the features aren't readily visible, uh, but you can see obviously I put this nice base on it and like textured, kind of like a little sidewalk kind of thing. Um, painted it, did like some, some burn marks, some weathering. Um, you can see I airbrushed a little bit of weathering like on the actual building itself um, and on the tops, right? Some burnout and some mud stains or whatever. Um, same with this uh, container here, um, but then some of it is structural, right? So this stuff's cardboard, like you can see the cardboard cutouts right here. Um, it's like really flimsy, right? So partly what I did was um, made them like really, really solid so that you could put big heavy metal models on them. Um, and then same thing on the bases of these things here uh, so that it won't like uh, give on the sides as much. And then also like there's little walkways as well that go like this. Um, they they kind of like clip in the sides of buildings, but uh, it's just cardboard here, but I made it so that um, like when you fold the cardboard, you fold it up and natural, the natural tendency for the cardboard is to push back out. So I made it um, so that these are like really rigid so they don't, they don't move around and they just always keep shape. And then also for these little cardboard boxes, um, these little like cargo containers and stuff, uh, just made them really really rigid and a little bit heavier so that when you're moving models around and stuff when you knock them like there's not as big of an effect and you can place models on top of them and same idea just not have to worry about them bouncing around uh, and stuff like that so uh, that's the in-depth look at exactly what we're going to do um, let me show you the materials you're going to need so firstly you are going to need your cardboard cutout terrain uh, that comes in the red veil starter set for infinity um, so here i have it all right here um, and you're going to need some uh, foam core. I've already got my stuff pre-cut. You're going to need some cardboard. Very important. You're going to need a paper clip and more foam core and so on. Um, and then equipment. You're going to need a hobby knife. A really sharp one for cutting the foam core. You're going to need some super glue and a hot glue gun. So there you go. That's all the stuff you're going to need uh, except for the painting portion. So I'll show you how to paint it later. I'm basically going to walk you through uh, each step one at a time, starting with the uh, cardboard cutout foldable building that they give you in the starter box. So here's one. And so just get yourself familiar with all the ways that it folds um, because yeah, you're just, you're just, you're going to want to be comfortable with it. Um, so kind of give them all a good fold. And even though there's preset lines there, like you're going to want to test out all the folds and really see how they bent. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's just go ahead and fold them all the way over underneath. It's pretty simple. All right. So pretty much there. Just inside these little ones have to fold out here. Um, that gives the floor or the roof, whatever you want to call it, something to rest on on the other side. Um, so let's go ahead and prep that side as well. And they've done a pretty good job at like the way that all the things fold helps to cover as many of the creases as possible. Um, so that you are always at least seeing part of the nicely printed design as opposed to like a white cardboard edge so you can see like here you can see the white cardboard edge but the way they folded um, these bits is they made them fold over top so you can still see like the nice colored part of it um, so yeah good job for them on doing that so there you go and these bottom bits they're going to be folded under like this and so you can see like that's it's pretty much done um, from from the way they give it to you out of the box. So you could just do that, right? And 
Your models, you can see though, they're like, it's like kind of bouncy, whereas on here, it's nice and solid on the, on the other ones. Um, and so, and here it's like really, really flimsy, though it's pretty good, like when you have with these pieces, it makes it pretty decent, but uh, you know, it like warps and stuff. Um, so it just, I wouldn't want it to like pop apart while I'm playing with it. And you can see, it like jumps. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why I kind of did all this stuff. So just make it a lot more solid and usable and durable so it'll last a long time. So there's a couple spots that I want to really um, firm it up. So first off, we look inside. I'm going to want to firm up the floor here. And then all these edges, because you see here, like when you compress it, they can really stretch out. So I'm definitely going to want to solidify all these edges here um, as well. So let's start off by doing that. Um, so I can get my flooring right in there. I'm just going to open this up. And I have a pre-cut piece of foam core. Okay, it fits right in there. Awesome. It's exactly what I need. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, cut out the pieces that, let's see See when I, when I turn it over and when I put it back together, there's these... Uh, there's these parts here that, that it kind of sits on, so that's going to gauge my height for me of exactly how far down the floor goes. Um, but I do need to make space, though, on my piece of foam core. So we can just go ahead, and you don't need to measure it really that all that accurately. You just need to make sure that it's a little bit bigger than those pieces. So chuck the spare piece aside. Sometimes they come in handy. Uh, later on for other things that you're doing terrain wise so I just keep like a big bag of random styrofoam chunks and foam core bits and cork bits laying around so there you go so that's gonna fit in nicely right there so let's just go ahead and glue that on um, make sure though you do glue it down properly so that uh, when you close it <laughs> the spare bits are on the side that you want it on. that could be a bad day So I just use a hot glue gun and do get some in the middle as well because you want it to be nice and solid. So it's a little bit hot, but press it on down. Right, cool, that's great. So now just to get some extra rigidity, um, I'm just going to push these little flaps in. So I'm gonna put some hot glue in here, and in here, and in here. And let's just hold these flaps down for a second. And I'll show you that the hot glue really does not take that long before you get a nice set. There you go. That's it. Cool. So that's the top bit done and ready to go. Let's just take a look, see? Beauty. So that's fitting in great. Now, let's do these floor bits. Um, so, I have them pre-cut already. Um, just in case you guys want the measurements. So for the uh, for the roofing bits, um, 16 and a half centimeters there, width by 11 and a half centimeters. That's what I use, just so it's a little bit smaller um, to fit inside of it. And then for the uh, the bits here, same measurement. So there's an 11 and a half one. And then for this side, a 16 and a half centimeter one there. Um, now, so what you're going to run into as you do these ones is when you put your first one in, um, everything will be fine. But then when you go ahead and put your second one in, they're going to butt up against each other. So you have to just kind of corner them a little bit. So take your hobby knife and uh, just kind of get like a nice little 45 degree right there. Same thing on both of them, and do it on both sides. Oh, 
awesome. And I'm gonna do it to all four. Just uh, hot glue them in, and just make sure you put them in the right way around uh, when you glue them in, because that would also be a bad day. Hot glue really is the perfect thing for this, because then you don't have to wait for it to dry. So just something that I noticed, a little tip. Um, you have where the pre-fold is, a little line to help you gauge where to get it onto. So it really helps you with putting these things on in the exact right spot so that when you fold over um, you get it you get it in the in the perfect spot and then you're gonna have a nice flat surface to glue it onto your your bigger foam core piece all right let's just keep gluing So you can see this is like, see how it's wobbly here? And this one's like perfectly straight now. It's exactly what we want. That's like super solid already. All right. So same thing that I did with the top. I'm just going to put some hot glue along these edges so that I can glue these flaps down. Be nice and solid. So that one down while I do this one. There, uh, in total, you get three of these big ones. So if you're pre-cutting all your pieces, you want three roofs, you want uh, six um, short length ones and six long ones, the 11 and a half centimeters and the 16 and a half centimeters. super solid um, but you still notice we got to do something about this top or else it comes up here um, so <clears throat> we want to um, glue it and you do have to glue it in the right spot though uh, because you want these little ladders that you get you want this lip here to be able to clip in the side so you want to glue it in such a way that you don't interfere with being able to take this in and out. Um, so what I did was actually um, pre-glued all of these bits on. So I just lifted them up, stuck some glue in, and then glued it down. Same thing with all of these. I'll just get in there, get a little squirt, doesn't have to be neat because it's on the inside. No one's going to see it. Whew, it is hot. So be careful as you're going. So now we're going to aim to get this last piece, this roof bit glued on. So I just want to pre uh, kind of pre check where everything is, sits right now um, because I want to get some glue down in this corner. So this corner there and there and so just look at the pattern here on the wall you'll kind of see like a little 
rectangle, rounded edged rectangle here. So you want to get your glue just below it because that'll be just below the floor. Okay. So I'm feeling confident. I know where all my stuff's supposed to go, where all my glue goes. Um, and I also want to get a little bit of glue in here so that when this flaps over, it'll be nice and tight. Um, and remember, do try not to glue it here. You just want to get it below these little oval shapes. And I am going to get a, a touch on these uh, these bits here that kind of hold the floor up. So here we go. Thing. You don't be super neat because nobody is going to see this part. And so you do want to hold it on all sides so that it gets nice and tight. If you're using like white glue or something, you may just want to use like an elastic. But, uh, Hot glue gun is pretty good, so. All right, there we go. There's that part of it all done. So you can tell already, it's like, it's like really sturdy. It's like, it won't move. You know, it's no, not bendy. This part's nice and solid. I got some figures here. You can see they just they stand on it real nice. They don't like bounce around. Um, no, oh, she just falls over. <laughs> she's a little bit. She, she, I put her way back on the base, so she just kind of <laughs> falls over anyways. Um, all right, so that looks great. I'm super stoked about that. Um, awesome. Now, we want to get the base ready to mount this thing on. So I have pre-cut already a big piece of foam core. Um, all right, and I'll tell you my measurements. So here, I made it 11 inches, um, let me tell you in centimeters as well, and I believe it is yeah, 28 centimeters by 18 and a half centimeters, or if you're an inch person, it's about seven and a quarter inches. Um, and the reason being is I can have a nice wide sidewalk to fit two figures on a one side, and a nice little narrow sidewalk where you can just fit one figure there. So. That's the reason. Um, and then so what I did was I got pre-cut um, pieces of just cardboard, shingle cardboard, like what you'd find at the back of a notepad or something like that. Um, just for little metal panels on the sidewalk here. Um, I have a decent amount of space in between. Um, and so I'll tell you the measurements for those so you guys can cut those out yourselves. So it, they're about mm, two and an eighth inches, or if you're a centimeters person, five and a half centimeters, and they're squares. So five and a half by five and a half. So that's the big ones. And then the little ones, to go on the sidewalk here, like this. So. What you want to do is, is I'm actually doing the work as I'm explaining. I'm just kind of laying them out in a pattern where they're nice and evenly spaced. So it looks like I can get six there on that side. And then probably get like five across here. And once you lay them out, then just kind of make sure they're all evenly spaced. And one more side. And six. All right. So there we go. Awesome. Cool. So that's just where I want it. And now you just go ahead and, uh, and glue those down. So pretty simple. 
Um, you, do, you don't want to glue your building down yet because if you have an airbrush at all or you want to paint um, this thing, you want to paint this, uh, all the gray and everything um, first so that you don't just like cover this building in gray paint. Uh, but you will do all the weathering after you glue it on, which I'll show you guys later. So just go ahead guys and oh, quick reload on my glue gun. Awesome. Get it right to the edge and just a little bit in the middle. And make sure now that you're gluing it that it's nice and square and that all the lines are parallel and everything so it looks nice and clean. Cool. Well, you guys don't need to watch me glue every single one of these squares down. So go ahead, glue them down. So I'm now going to show you what to do with the little bridge. So you don't need to do much with this, um, but what we do want is for these sides to be stable. And so this is when you're going to use your paper clip. Um, so first things first, just straighten it out as best you can. And this is a, this is a thicker paper clip. You can probably get away with doing a thin one, but uh, just using this thicker paper clip here. And straighten it all the way out. I'm actually going to use my clippers to help me out here. Just get a good good leverage on this thing. All right. So now what I'm going to do is just kind of pre-fold this thing. So go up and they go down. And go over. And over. Cool. Alright, so now all we gotta do is kind of like check the height of it, right? So you want your paper clip to be uh, just a little bit less than the height, maybe about three quarters of the way up there. So I'm just gonna measure that and grab it. I'm not gonna clip it there, but I'm just gonna grab it there. And I want a nice tight bend here. Nice tight bend. So yeah, so we got our bend here. Pretty good, that's exactly it. All right, so now we want to go across. Nice tight bend, grab it there. Sweet. Bend it up. Fabulous. And now just check the height again and clip it off. Is that about three quarters of the way up? Sweet. Now you can use this one as the base for the second one. Because um, it is a long ridge, we do I want to do it on both sides. Now the only thing you might want to do now is just check the height. Yeah, I think we're pretty good on one side. I am going to clip this side down a little bit. Great. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, uh, is glue them in. So just kind of pre-fit it. Fits perfect. And this one's a little bit tight. But that'll do. Okay. So you just kind of do it like that. And I'm just going to kind of leave them there. 
and just glue on top of it like this. All right, and we'll just let that dry. And uh, we can kind of work around it. So this is the hard part without getting super glue all over your hands. Kind of fold these flaps over, squish them through, and then pull them out. out over here so I'm just gonna bend that paper clip in a little bit all right and now with the hot glue gun I'm just gonna glue this flat down a little bit so that it's not hanging down you can see it underneath of your plan just tuck that paper right up there all right and there's the bridge Nice and sturdy. All right, and so lastly, we have the boxes. You can see those right here, guys. Um, they come on the sheet, so you kind of just step one, pull all this excess uh, cardboard off. Really simple. And get rid of that stuff. Cool. Now, uh, all I did is just kind of pre pre fold all these. Very, very simple. And I'll pre fold it up. You can see how it turns really easily into that box there. So now I have these squares here. Um, the measurement for these guys is five and a half centimeters, or if you're an inches person, it's about two and an eighth inches. Um, all right, and so they're cut just like this, but what we got to do. Um, is because when you when you put these together, you see this these folds here, um, they're kind of at an angle. So you got to bevel the edges on them, okay, so that they fit in, and don't disturb. And so the reason uh, I'm doing these pieces here, one, like I said, is to add a little bit of weight, so it's just a little bit more substantial when it's sitting on the table, uh, but also to again keep them nice and sturdy. So definitely worthwhile endeavor. So let's bevel these. Just got your flat piece there, and you don't have to be neat about it. You just kind of gotta maverick style, just go for it. Bevel all these edges. <clears throat> all right. Pretty stoked for this game. I have no idea yet what any of my units do or anything, but uh, yeah, it's just fun. Just like skir skirmish style game, lots of guns, sci fi style. Kind of reminds me. Uh, my Necromunda days. I miss that game a lot. And so hopefully um, I can get kind of that vibe going, except for the kind of RPG style of Necromunda where characters grow and they gain skills and you find weapons. All right, so now we got that out. So what I noticed while I was doing my first one is that uh, the little flaps here, um, when you stick them in the slot on the other side. Uh, if you have a piece in there, um, you kind of block the slot. And so the, the, the 
piece can't go inside the slot. So I, uh, I cut them, I cut out a little space here so that can go in. Um, so I'll show you how that works. Uh, Cause I just have one more to do. Um, is I just kind of laid it there and then just marked in the foam, the width of it. Uh, and one of them is wider than the two other ones. So I'm doing the wider one here. Finish this off. And just rip the piece out again. This is on the inside, so you do not need to be neat about this stuff. Cool. So let's uh, let's get our hot glue gun and let's stick them in. So. And kind of do two at a time and, and get away with it before the glue hot glue dries. So, if you can get away with it, you might as well. The rule does not apply in all situations. <laughs> Alright, two outside ones. press and it, it sticks really quickly so you don't have to worry about it too much. The last one. You also don't need much of it either. It's another good benefit of it. Just squeeze it out, be liberal. Don't really worry about it. Alright, now let's fold this guy up. You can see it's a lot easier to do this now. Um, okay, so there is a particular order here that I noticed, so fold these in, okay, and then fold these in, they can go on top, that's not the one that matters, um, the one that matters is this one, that's going to kind of be the last one to go in, so what I notice here is you kind of want to put these down and then start putting these, these side flaps in, but don't close it yet. Okay, so I kind of got them both halfway in. Okay, and now this guy. Okay, this is the part. You, you want to get this flap inside where these have folded over. And that way you can cover up as much of the, uh, the ends of the card as possible. So there we go. So I kind of got it loosely fitted. I need to get this flap in here. Okay, and now I'm just going to stick the end of the glue gun in here and just inject some glue in the side there. And before I seal it down, I really want to get these flaps locked in. So I got a little bit of squeeze out, which is a good thing. You just run your finger along and get it off. And you're good. Cool, now let's get the other side. Make sure this flap here is in. squeeze out. Let's just get it off. Push it down. Clean it up. All right. There we go. So there's the boxes ready for some paint. All right. I hope you guys like that. And we'll do the next video of painting them and then finishing them off doing some weathering and all that kind of stuff. So, hope you guys enjoyed that, and we will see you in the next one. Like a monkey in a